Hey guys, Gunnar Thompson here with my second part of the blog, My Experience with the Recruiting Process. And uh, this one is going to pay particular attention to visiting schools and some questions to ask, some questions uh, that I wish I would have asked, and then also just my thoughts on the whole experience. Um, during this, I want you to keep in mind two things uh, whenever you're visiting any school, no matter what it is. Number one, do not believe that you are better than the school you are visiting. Okay? You do not need to think that it's, t you're, you're, it's beneath you. Um, be humble about it. Two, do not believe that you are not good enough for any school that you attend. Um, as soon as you walk in, I know that I had an experience one time where uh, I walked in and, and they had several guys going to elite level D1s and it really made me nervous and I sat there and I was like, am I even good enough for this school? And that wasn't the right attitude to have. Um, no matter if I chose it or not, I, I should have sat there and said, yeah, I belong here. Um, so keep those two things in mind. All right. So before visiting any school, uh, what I would do and what I would recommend is you outline five schools that you would like to attend that could be based off of academics, athletics, etc. Um, next, as an athlete, you need to try and get a hold of the coach and see if he will be there for a visit, uh, if he could show you around, and, uh, and if you could just visit with them. Um, if you're not already being scouted, you know, that can be a little bit more of a challenge. Uh, if you are being scouted, most of the time uh, you text or call the coach and, and the coach tells you when the best opportunity for, for that is. Um, so once you actually go and visit, um, if you haven't already done so, it kind of goes like, you know, you meet the coach, uh, you sit down, you kind of have a conversation about their program, how good they've been, uh, what they're trying to achieve, so on and so forth. Um, most of the time, if you're in contact with the assistant coach, the head coach will be there. Um, so that's a different experience. You're getting to meet that head coach. Um, and then they'll kind of take you a tour around the facility. Um, kind of tell you a little bit about the facilities, what they have to offer, what they don't. Um, and then they'll go on and they'll talk a little bit more about the academic side of things as well. Um, and then wrapping it up, they'll just kind of ask you what your opinion of the place is and um, basically say that they're open to talk at any time. So that's kind of just what kind of goes on. Um, so one of the things that's really important whenever you're looking at a school is going to be the coaches and it's not just the head coach um, the head coach more than often than not is not even uh, unless he is the pitching coach um, or the hitting coach depending on if you're if you're a, um, a position player or a PO um, most of the time the head coaches are kind of in the background uh, they take care of uh, a lot of the things behind the scenes um, your pitching coach or your hitting coach is kind of going to be your direct contact they're going to be the ones that train you, they're going to be the ones that mentor you, and they're the ones that's in charge of your development. So get to know your pitching coach or get to know your hitting coach. And make sure that they're along the same lines uh, of thinking than you are. You know, I personally went to the Texas Baseball Ranch, so I knew that my style of training was uh, vastly different than the majority, uh, what the majority of coaches uh, were preaching. Um, but I found a couple schools that uh, their, their coaches had similar beliefs. And uh, that's what made me really, really interested. And uh, to be truthful, the junior college that I chose, um, I spoke to the pitching coach several times. And each time I talked to him, it felt like we had uh, more and more of a connection. And so um, it is important. It is important to have that pitching coach that you believe is going to benefit your development. Because that's what you're there for. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't seriously believe that any athlete just goes to college uh, just to play and be done. Um, they have a hope and a dream of moving on, you know, playing some sort of professional ball. You know, if they go to a junior college, they want to play a D1 level. Um, they want to go to a four-year D1. They want to move on in life. And so in order to have that, you got to have development. Um, speaking on the same side of development, uh, it's important to consider your surroundings, uh, not just the campus itself, but the surroundings. Is there a physical therapist nearby that specializes in baseball players? Um, you know, particularly in pitchers or hitters. 
um, or etc. You know, one of the things that I didn't really pay attention to uh, was the physical therapy. I was injured uh, coming into the school, um, and I knew that. And I, and I really should have been much more aware of, of the physical therapy and, and the trainers that were around. Um, but I went to a place that uh, um, had a physical therapy clinic and, and, and was okay. Um, they did not specialize in baseball. Um, I went to a, a college that didn't have athletic trainers, and I believe that athletic trainers could have really helped me in my, my recovery process. Um, one of the other things to look at would be the training facility itself. Um, is it open 24 hours to the, to the athletes? Um, also, is there places outside of the facilities if it's not open 24 hours that you can get your throwing in, uh, that you can get your swings in? You know, can you get your strength and conditioning in? Uh, we had a really nice baseball field, uh, but it wasn't open to us at all times. And so there was a soccer field behind the baseball field that uh, gave me ample opportunity to long toss and do what I needed to do. Um, there were several um, co uh, brick walls that I could easily throw my weighted balls into, uh, perform my handle medicine ball, wall series, um, basically prepare me. Um, the next thing would be the actual facilities uh, as far as gym wise. Um, all coaches want you to get bigger, stronger, and faster, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but one thing that you need to take into consideration is most of the time that weight room is open 24 hours. Um, it's going to be hard pressed to find coaches that don't want you in the weight room. Now the thing is, is you need to figure out what you need to do in that weight room, weight room uh, to prepare you for battle. And so uh, if that means uh, getting some band work in, if that means uh, getting some mobility, flexibility work in, um, then, then that's where you may need to do it. Um, you know, another consideration is the, uh, is the dorm rooms. Um, I think it's going to be hard for us to find a college that doesn't require you to stay in the dorms at least your first year. And uh, one of the things that I found that was uh, beneficial for me is I had a room to myself, which is very uncommon in junior college. But it gave me ample room where I could do some foam rolling. You know, I could do some weighted ball throws. Um, I could do some stuff in my room that would better prepare me for the field. And so even if you don't have a room by yourself, is there enough space there that you can perform some things in your dorm room? Because you're going to have to. Um, it's going to rain. It's going to snow. Um, you know, fields are going to flood. You're going to have to run out there at 5 a.m. and pull tarp. Um, you're going to have to run out there at midnight and, and, and put the tarp back on. Um, so that's just the way things are going to be. And, and you got to have room somewhere else inside under covered areas where you can still get work in. Um, the next thing is academics. Uh, everybody needs to uh, have, a, have their goal of what they want to do academically. For me, I went to a junior college and my goal was to come out of there with an associates in something. I did not want to just get my basics. Um, if your goal is just the basics, that's fine. But uh, I wanted to get a degree in accounting and I ended up getting an associates in accounting and, uh, and that was my goal. Um, other than that, I would, I would give you a warning to this, though. Um, you look at all of these things, but you have to realize that it might change. Um, your coaches, they could move on. Uh, they could leave before you even get there. Um, they could add new dorms. Um, they could take away some dorms. Uh, they could create a parking lot where a soccer field was. Um, all of these things can change, and so you must have backup plans even if you find the place of your dreams and you really believe that this has everything that you could possibly need to develop as an athlete. Um, you need to be prepare for the changes that will occur, and you need to prepare, prepare for the new coaching. Um, you know, I, I experienced that. I signed with a, a pair of coaches that uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. And we had a new group of coaches that came in, and I thoroughly enjoyed them. Um, they gave me opportunities and everything else. Uh, some people aren't as blessed as that. Um, so those are just things that you really need to consider whenever you're visiting schools. Uh, make sure to ask a lot of questions. Uh, don't be afraid not to. I know that everybody's going to say that. Your parents are going to say that. Um, but it's the truth. Um, the more that you have a better understanding of what you're walking into, the better off you'll be. All right. Um, I will have a part three installment as well. 
uh, just kind of going over um, what it's like what it's like in college life um, once you get there and so uh, I really hope you stay tuned and, and we'll look out for that so remember to be unique and hashtag be elite